straight from Bullshit Corner and welcome to another video. In today's video we are going to do opinion seal. In my 2006 F-150 4x4, a couple weekends ago I was towing the boat home and uh, after we put the boat in storage I noticed that my differential was soaked in oil and it appeared to be coming from the pinion seal. So I picked up a pinion seal and we're going to do a video on how to and how to go about changing that out and hopefully that's all that there is to matter. Um, you know the rear end still sounds good, doesn't seem to be making any noises so I'm hoping that you know there's not problems with the bearings or anything but we're going to find that out once we remove the drive shaft and everything else but like always every video is going to start off with a beer and this is my last can of PBR and then um, after that it's off to a new beer. We got to savor this, it's my last beer, so hopefully the project is completed before this is done or I'm going to get pretty fucking cranky. Here we got to remove these four screws and before you remove your drive shaft you want to make a mark somewhere between here and here just so that you put it on in the right orientation. Uh, just for balance purposes it's possible if you didn't put it in the right location that you may have a high speed wobble. I tried this shit out, it's uh, called Fluid Film. It's it's no PB blaster. The store was out, but they said the stuff's equal or better. So we're gonna see. So I'm gonna mark that. We're gonna remove these bolts, remove the drive shaft to get access to the nut that holds this piece on. I've got to remove it in order to get the pinion seal out. Drive shaft off. The drive shaft's on the ground here. And the best way to get the drive shaft off is I use a rubber mallet. You can see it right there. And with the rubber mallet, I just pounded on the drive shaft and it came off. You can try prying it off, but if your drive shaft has never been off, odds are it won't be. So this is the important part. You don't just want to remove this nut yet because there's preload on that bearing. And because of that preload, the preload is set perfectly for that bearing. Because if you have too much on it, you're going to fucking wear that bearing out. And if you have too little on there, the bearing's going to have slop and you're going to wear it out also. So the best way to do it is I mark my nut. You can't see because I got some lubricant on it because that nut's not going to come off that well. So basically I marked it here and I marked it there as a reference point. And by measuring it, I'm about seven mils down on the thread. So that's how we're going to go. Remember that? Seven millimeters. That's what mine is. Yours might be different for the preload, but now we're going to go about getting that off. An impact gun, probably not going to get that off. I'm probably going to have to use a snipe, and I'm going to explain that why in a second. Now we're going to recap here. Those are the four bolts that hold your drive shaft on. It's a 12 mil, 12 point socket to get them off. And at first I tried to use the Snap-on 3.8 gun, it didn't have enough power. Then I tried to use the IR half inch gun, it has 1100 foot pounds of torque in reverse, that didn't work. I ended up using a breaker bar and a snipe and that was the only thing that was able to break it free, which is probably what I'm going to have to do for that nut as well. So the nut came off really easy, a lot easier than I thought, I thought I was going to have to snipe it off or something. It was an inch and an eighth. Now for this part here, to get this bracket off, the easiest way I found that I'm going to do it, is I'm going to use a gear puller to pull that off. That's going to be the easiest way for me to yank that off without damaging it. So there we go, there we got it off. You can see this leaking through the seal. I'm going to pry the seal out now. Here's this piece here. I went with a different puller. This was a little bit easier to get at. And now we're going to get some brake clean, spray that shit off, wipe it down, uh, yank the old seal out, and fucking change it out. I want to show you this part here. Easiest way to get a seal on an iPhone is I took a chisel and I very lightly kind of tapped a corner in and then once you get up there you just pry around the outsides just like that. So I'm going to rip this out and put the new seal in quickly. Alright, so this is the shit I hate. The parts store said this is the seal for my truck. It's way too fucking small. Way too fucking small. So here we are, we got the right seal now. It turns out they did sell me the right seal. However, my truck seems to have an F-350 axle for some reason. At least that's what the seal number comes up with. Uh, it seems pretty odd to me, but we're going to put the seal in now. We've got the new seal installed, and this is the easiest way to use a body hammer. I just use it to tap it around. And as you can see, there's still a leak there, but don't be alarmed because the seal actually seals on this. It doesn't, that's not sealed, that's, that's still open. So. The uh, rear differential seal seals around this, and that's what's going to stop it from leaking. So there we have it. It's back in position. This doesn't like to go on that easy. So in order to 
do not wear out your threads on here. When you're getting it on, take a hammer, bang around the flange, that'll tap it in, tighten it up a little bit more, bang around here, tighten it up a little more. And uh, what this differential rear end is different from others is that uh, once you hit the, the bottom, it actually stops. So it was seven mils in. Once we got seven mils in, that was it. Uh, he couldn't turn the nut anymore, so we're bottomed out. And that's exactly where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to jack up the rear end, and we're going to put the drive shaft back on, and we're done. Now before you put those back in, it's very important that you put Loctite on those all. The last thing you want to do is have them come out. Same as on this nut right here, lock tight that as well. And now we're ready to put the drive shaft on. Top of flange, I always like to go this corner, that corner, that corner, then crisscross back to this corner, then once around the clock to make sure it's tight. That way, your flange is going to be bolted up evenly and you shouldn't have any problems. So now everything's bolted up, I'm just going to fill up the differential, lower it on the ground take it out for a spin and see if it's still leaking. So now that we've got the seal back in, we're going to recap on the project. Uh, go over some points. Safety. Number one, safety. Once you remove the drive shaft, make sure you have your wheels chalked somewhere. Because once that drive shaft comes on, it doesn't matter if your transmission's in park or not, it's going to roll. So make sure your front wheels are chalked if you have it jacked up in the air or whatever. Make sure that is absolute must. Use Loctite on the nut that holds the um, flange on and Loctite on your bolts that hold your U-joints on as well. Also, uh, yeah, the project went pretty good except for the fact that my limited slip differential that I found out I have, that's kind of a bonus. Uh, that would explain why sometimes it would lock up when I was driving. I thought my differential was going, but that's the reason why. Also, um, why somebody would put a one ton axle in a 150 truck is beyond me. I haven't confirmed 100% if it's a one ton axle, but when I went to the parts store to return that seal, uh, they cross referenced it on their computer and, and in their books, and the F-150 rear differential seal kept coming up as the same number they gave me. The seal that I got for my truck is out of an F-350 out of the same year. It was an ex-fleet truck before, used in road construction, so who knows. But anyways, uh, I hope this video helped you out. And anyways, thanks for watching, and fucking drink beer, and get hammered.